Hello everybody, a very happy day to you and welcome to the YouTube channel Banking Fundas. I am your learning partner Sushila Hariharan. In this module, we are going to take a look at the regulatory environment that Indian banks work with, especially in the context of maintenance of statutory reserves such as CRR, that is a cash reserve ratio, and the SLR, that is a statutory liquidity ratio. How do we calculate CRR and SLR from NDTL? that is, the net demand and time liabilities will also be discussed. Let's start with what is it that banks do. Banks have to maintain liquidity at all points of time. This is primarily because banks accept different kinds of deposits from various categories of customers. These deposits could be in the nature of CASA accounts, called as current accounts and savings accounts, or they could be in the nature of RAFA accounts, that is the recurring deposits and the fixed deposits. These four categories of deposits form the backbone of the bank's deposit borrowings. These deposits are placed by external depositors into the bank. Therefore, the bank has an honor and a commitment to these depositors that as and when they need money, as in demand deposits, the bank has to repay back. As and when the deposits mature, that is time deposits, they have to repay back. What does a bank do with all these deposits? The bank lends it to retail individuals, people like you and me, who take home loans, car loans, loan against gold, or even personal loans. Banks but lend a bulk of these deposits to the corporate segment. Corporates need bank loans for meeting their working capital requirements and project financing requirements. So a lot of money that comes via deposits into the banking system is lent to corporates and to individuals. If corporate loans become bad then the bank is not able to return back the deposits. This breaks the trust of the depositors in the bank, as we have seen in the case of a few banks recently, like PMC Bank. So therefore, in order to keep up the trust and faith that we have in the bank, it is very important that banks are in a position to honor all the obligations and commitments to the depositors. Why is statutory reserves in place? Let us take an example of my favorite uh, comic character, Dr. Strange, from the Marvel series. Let's assume we have a bank in India called as Marvel Bank. And Dr. Strange, let's assume he's an Indian character, deposits 5 lakh rupees with Marvel Bank. So for Marvel Bank, Dr. Strange is a depositor, he's a customer, and Marvel Bank decides, let's assume, to disburse the entire sum of money of 5 lakhs to Thanos. Is this possible? If this happens, and if Thanos becomes bankrupt, then the borrower's bankruptcy will affect the financial strength of Marvel Bank. If Marvel Bank becomes financially worried, or not in a financially healthy position, it might not be able to return the deposit back to Dr. Strange. Therefore, statutory reserves are kept by banks because they have to meet their commitments of liquidity to the depositors. For this, RBI has prescribed the calculation of NDTL as the first step of maintenance of reserves. So how is NDTL computed? The first step is to calculate the demand and time liabilities. Let us go back to our example of Marvel Bank. We calculate all the outstanding deposits of Marvel Bank, that is both the demand and the time liabilities of Marvel Bank. Plus, 
we add all the outstanding borrowings of the bank. This could be in the nature of bonds that have been placed with other financial institutions or certificates of deposits that have been floated in the money markets. An aggregate of these two factors gives us what is called as DTL or demand and time liabilities. From this, we now go to the second step, which is calculation of net. So what are we netting? So the first step is we aggregate. The second step is we deduct. What do we deduct? We reduce the interbank assets. For example, if Marvel Bank has taken a loan from another bank, it is also possible that Marvel Bank has given a loan to another bank. Therefore, this interbank assets has to be only computed by one of the banks for calculation of NDTL and that amount has to be netted. NDTL is calculated on 1st January of 2021, the day on which Dr. Strange puts the money into the bank and the CRR and SLR are calculated on the NDTL levels of this particular day for every day during the fortnight. Now that we've understood what is NDTL and how it is calculated, let us break it down to the reserves. The first one is CRR. Let's analyze the four dimensions of CRR. The first dimension is what it is. Cash reserve ratio is the ideal cash that is maintained by bank. That means the bank is just keeping this reserve in ideal cash, okay, so that it can maintain and honor all obligations to its depositors, vendors, customers, anybody. The second dimension is why is it maintained? It is maintained so that bank is adequately liquid and is able to honor all the obligations. How is it maintained? That is the third dimension. This third dimension explains that the cash reserve ratio is kept as idle cash and because it's kept as idle cash, it cannot earn any returns. And the fourth dimension is when is it maintained? CRR is maintained every day, but it is reported to RBI on a fortnightly basis. So in the previous slide, we saw the calculation of NDTR. In the next slide, we are going to calculate CRR. So let us now link the concepts of CRR and NDTL and understand the dimensions of CRR. CRR is maintained as a percentage of NDTL. NDTL is a net demand and time liabilities as already discussed. Demand liabilities is all the CASA accounts and time liabilities is all the RAFA accounts. This implies all the deposits of the bank. So for example, if CRR is 3%, let us see how banks maintain CRR. Back to the case of Marvel Bank. Dr. Strange keeps rupees 5 lakhs with Marvel Bank and let us assume this is the only deposit of Marvel Bank that Marvel Bank has as on 1st January. So as on 1st January 2021, which is the reporting Friday, published by RBI on its website, the NDTL of Marvel Bank is 5 lakh rupees. CRR is 3% of 5 lakh rupees. 5 lakh rupees multiplied by 3% gives us 15,000 rupees. Bank reports the CRR to RBI on the succeeding fortnight on 14th January which is a Thursday. After looking at the statutory reserve of CRR, we will now look at the statutory reserve of SLR or statutory liquidity ratio. Again analyzing it in the four dimensions. The first one what is it? It is statutory liquidity ratio. See how important liquidity is to the bank that despite maintaining CRR, the banks have to also maintain SLR. So it is not just enough 
that banks are liquid but they also have the second conflicting argument that is the profitability angle and therefore slr comes into the picture the second dimension is why is it needed slr is maintained so that bank enjoys good levels of liquidity and profitability now good level differs from bank to bank and depends upon the size of operations of the bank the scale of the bank the reach of the branches etc the third dimension is how is it maintained investments in gsec gsec means government of india securities uh, bonds treasury bills and approved securities so now slr is not idle cash so slr earns some kind of returns for the bank because the bank is making these investments for the bank investments in slr securities is an asset okay and therefore these investments in gsec treasury bills and approved securities is very crucial for the bank and when is it reported like crr slr is also calculated as a percentage of ndtl it is kept it is reported to the rbi on a fortnightly basis on the same fortnight date that the crr is declared so rbi releases the entire reporting friday calendar a year in advance so banks know what is the ndtl they have to calculate and how much they have to report and on what day they have to report it these are prescribed forms that have been given by rbi to all the banks to understand slr let's meet marvel bank again dr strange has already deposited 5 lakhs ndtl of the bank on 1st january 2021 is 5 lakhs slr is 18% of 5 lakhs that works out to 90000 bank reports the slr level to rbi on 14th january 2021 all right so now from this 5 lakh rupee deposit that dr strange has kept crr is maintained as well as slr is maintained the bank has to report this to the rbi to demonstrate to the bank to the reserve bank that the bank is adequately liquid what are the main differences between crr and slr how it is maintained crr is maintained by way of idle cash slr is maintained in investments in government securities gold treasury bills etc returns does the bank make any money out of these investments in crr no the bank has no earnings from the investments in crr on the other hand on slr because it is making investments in government securities therefore the bank earns coupon from the government securities the banks are also allowed to trade on these slr securities therefore they can make some bit of trading profits now we reach the last dimension of the lendable funds that a bank has now so let's go back to marvel bank it has received a deposit of 5 lakhs from dr strange it has to keep crr of 15000 it has to keep slr of 90000 the lendable funds of marvel bank is now 5 lakhs minus 15000 minus 90000 that is 3 lakh 95000 that means the bank is not allowed to lend the entire 5 lakhs to the borrowers it can only lend after maintenance of statutory reserves therefore the bank is maintaining enough liquidity and at the same time meeting the profitability targets by making investments in slr this way the bank is safeguarded against potential bankruptcies and are therefore able to honor all their commitments and obligations to their depositors thank you so much for listening in if you have any queries please post in the comments box If there are any topics that you would like me to cover do post your suggestions in the comment box your food feedback is extremely important to me and my team 
hit the like button, share the channel with your friends and subscribe to the YouTube channel Banking Fundas with Sushila Hariharan. Thank you.